road tripping the Swiss Alps in our classic Porsche 911. This idea has been living inside me and my father's head for decades, and in 2022 we finally got around to doing it. Despite having a gobsmacking 260,000 km on a clock, we trusted our 911 to endlessly drive up and down gorgeous mountain passes. Some legendary like the Stelvio Furca or San Bernardino, others unknown to us, but no less beautiful. We climbed to plus 2000 meters of altitude several times, in the sun, in the rain, and explored the Swiss Alps like never before, with a roaring flat six in the back, enjoying view after view in this stunning country. Five days, 2,500 kilometers, and two car enthusiasts with a dream. My name is Robin, and welcome to Retroschaft Christmas Special. Our journey began on a Wednesday in July, in our home country of Belgium. The goal was to first get to the historic street track of Solitude, where we wanted to have a lunch break. However, it didn't take long before the car left us stranded somewhere in West Germany. Well, uh, the morning is off to a great start. Um, we are heading to... Uh, uh, Austria and Switzerland for a road trip of five days in the Alps, which is pretty amazing. Um, stopped for fuel, did in some uh, 102 octane, which is pretty damn good. Um, and then we uh, experienced a battery failure. So we drove to the near nearest uh, auto store, bought a new battery. Hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get through the weekend okay and all right. Um, I'm going to be driving for a bit. It's in total about a seven or eight hundred kilometer drive. We've done a few hundred already and uh, we've got about 500 more to go. After a quick battery change we pushed forward, passed a beautiful Mercedes and Volvo on the highway and arrived at Solitude a few hours later right in time for lunch. So what we're actually doing this weekend is we're taking the 911 Carrera 3.2 all the way to the uh, the Austrian and Swiss Alps. We're going to be road tripping uh, the mountains for uh, five days in total. We are now in the area of Stuttgart and we have a little bit more to go in uh, the next few hours of driving and um, eventually we'll head into Austria and already do a few mountain passes today. But right now we are in the area of Stuttgart. We're near uh, Solitude. Last week was uh, this last week this was the area where the Solitude Revival event was going on which is basically like the good revival, but in this case it's um, a revival of a historic street track, which is like the Salted track here. And they used to do F1 here, they used to do all sorts of races here back in the day. It was pretty popular, very, very popular circuit. Um, and it seems like we still have two Lancias here that were left here from last week. They look pretty beat up. They've got pretty nice rims, kind of OZ racing style. Don't know if these are originals, but they have OZ Racing painted on them and it seems like it's stamped on here as well. Not sure if you can see that but it seems like they're stamped on there as well um, so seems original. But yeah we've got two pretty cool cars. Uh, four doors now I think all HF Integrales were four doors I'm not sure I don't know these cars too well um, but they sure look very nice. I mean Seems like they've they've been here for a while or been outside for a while. These rims are pretty cool too. I think this second car kind of has a Delta S4 vibe with those wheels. Looks pretty cool. So you can see Solitude Revival. So they've definitely been here for the event for some kind of display or driving. Not really sure. But um, yeah, 
This is a pretty cool car. So usually with these old street tracks here in Europe, there's not really that much left of the original track from back in the day. Also because those tracks didn't have really have armco barriers or anything like that. But what they do usually keep is a timing building somewhere where they kept the times, the lap times, uh, the laps and everything. So um, for the Solitude race track, that is still around as well. And that's a place where we're going to go to right now. The Solitude racetrack is 11.4 kilometers long and was built back in 1935. The official lap record is on Jim Clark's name, which he set in the Lotus F1 car in 1963. The track closed down two years later in 1965, but remains a very popular spot for car enthusiasts and historic racing events. We drove a lap around the track when we arrived, however a very harsh speed limit of 60 kilometers per hour, combined with the long winding corners, meant it was almost impossible to really enjoy the beauty of this historic street circuit. Yet we could still very much feel the presence of an epic 1960s racecourse. We continued our journey to Austria afterwards, and started racking up the kilometers with our sights set on the beautiful Alps. Despite the 911 having a stiff suspension and no AC, the seats are surprisingly comfortable, making the many highway kilometers much more enjoyable. After crossing the Austrian border, it didn't take long before mountains started appearing in the distance. The views were absolutely spectacular and we could barely contain our excitement while approaching this gorgeous and gigantic mountain range. This called for a stop at a petrol station, because both we and the car were in dire need of a drink and a bit of a rest before diving into our first mountain passes of the weekend. After a scorching hot day in the car we uh, finally arrived in the Alps and it's uh pretty epic to approach the Alps at the very beginning because you're just driving on a land which is as flat as a pancake as we say in Belgium um, and then all of a sudden in the distance you can start to see these mountain tops in, in between the, the clouds and, and things like that and you can slowly see them coming closer and closer and getting big, bigger and bigger and uh, it's a pretty beautiful view. Our joyous mood however was short-lived. About 20 minutes later, it started raining cats and dogs, which also caused the mountain pass we were meant to cross to close down. After several detours, we ended up on the Fehrenpass with a view that we will never forget. It's raining, it's thundering, but we are uh, truly in the Alps right now. Need. 9-11 is standing here with a truly beautiful backdrop. Also a pretty fun little fact, every mountain pass in the Alps has its own sticker. And then we're gonna buy a sticker on every mountain pass that we do and fit them onto the uh, the front underside the front the underside of the front bonnet basically. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Sadly though, our bad luck with mountain passes being blocked due to the bad weather didn't end there. We've been driving around for quite some time trying to find a, a way to our hotel. A lot of mountain roads seem to be closed due to the bad weather or roadworks. Um, and while it is lovely to drive in the valleys beneath uh, or in between all the mountains, it isn't really ideal because every detour that you have to do is quite a long way around. Um, because usually there's only like one road that goes in between the valleys. Um, so yeah, not ideal, but we should be there in about 10 minutes. Which is a good thing because we've been driving for 950 kilometers almost. So uh, yeah, it's been quite long.
we've made it to the hotel. It's still raining cats and dogs. Unfortunately, uh, we're gonna go to the town center to get something to eat. And um, pretty nice of the owner that she lets us put our uh, our car inside the garage. So uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty cool. We just had a, uh, a lovely dinner, I'm now just on the terrace enjoying the, uh, the mountain view for a little bit. It has cooled down, which is um, very, very nice, because um, it's been like, I think 35, maybe even more degrees Celsius in the, in the car all day, which is um, almost your own body temperature, so your, your body really has some trouble cooling down when it's that hot. So uh, yeah, it's nice to, uh, to have some rain and um, have it cool down right now, also for the night. It's gonna be better to, to sleep with a bit of a lower temperature than those high temperatures as well. Um, but yeah, that was a very nice dinner after a almost 1,000 kilometer drive today. Um, I think we're gonna sleep well, and tomorrow we're heading to Italy, then Switzerland, uh, to see more of the Alps, to, see, to do more very nice roads. So uh, yeah. I'm gonna enjoy this view for a little bit longer and then uh, I'll go to bed. See you tomorrow. A very good morning from the Austrian Alps. It's looking like an absolutely beautiful day. In a few minutes when we leave, we'll drive into uh, Italy, do the Stelvio Pass today, which is obviously a legendary mountain road here in Europe. I will do a few very great other mountain passes as well and then end the day in St. Moritz in Switzerland. Well, that's uh, decal number one. Obviously, the goal is to have as many decals from this trip and other trips as possible in the end. But uh, it's good to see that the collection has begun. After a good night's sleep and a nice breakfast at the hotel, we took one last look at the map and decided on our route for the day. A quick stop at the local petrol station to fill up the car, and we were ready to head right into the mountains. Destination Stelvio. Enjoying the soft morning sun and fresh mountain air felt great after a scorching hot drive in the 911 the day before. We swiftly got to the beginning of the Selvio Pass. The first part is surrounded by thick woods which, from time to time, reveal the Selvio's epic glaciers. The 911 took the endless hairpins and thin air with ease, but it wasn't until we had already been climbing non-stop for 20 minutes that the true Stelvio revealed itself.
When we finally got to the top of the Stelvio Pass, we arrived in what was probably the busiest mountaintop village we had ever seen. Well, uh, we made it to the top and it's pretty busy up here. Uh, we're gonna look for our sticker, our decal of the Stelvia Pass. And then uh, we're going to go onwards. Never seen a busier mountain top, I think. <laughs> the, the amount of people and bikers and everything passing through here is uh, pretty astonishing. We left the Stelvio mountaintop village and decided to eat lunch on the go. Making our way to Davos, we check off three more mountain passes the Umbriel, Ofen, and Fluela Pass. The Fluela Pass had been on our list ever since Top Gear called this one of the most beautiful roads in the world, and what we experienced was nothing short of being called absolute driving heaven. An endless combination of smooth, sometimes even banked curves, which were complemented by the odd hairpin, guided us to the top of the mountain. I could go on forever about the beauty of this road, but even that comes second to the beauty of the scenery. Which, I'll let you enjoy to your heart's content. We arrived at the top of the Fluela Pass with a smile that confirmed we were in the right place, at the right time, in the right car, and most of all, with the right company. We took our time to enjoy our last mountain top of the day and reminisce about all the things we'd seen over the past hours. Yet we still had one more thing to do. Well, let's go look for another sticker. 350? So? <laughs> Danke. Danke. Oh. Made it to our hotel. It's a, it's a pretty small little room, but it does the job very nicely, so uh, we're happy. Uh, we're not too difficult on this. Uh, it's also beautifully located in the valley, right beneath the mountains, so that's pretty cool as well. I'll give you a view of it in a, in a second. But uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're pretty tired actually. We've only done like 250 kilometers in total today, but those were uh, pretty harsh kilometers. Luckily, the temperatures were a lot lower than yesterday, which is extremely nice because yesterday was just, it was killing us where we were sitting. Um, and even though that the rain cooled everything down later in the day, which was extremely welcome, um, it also made everything extremely moist, so that was less uh, 
we were a bit less excited about that. But um, yeah, we're gonna grab something to eat. Um, luckily we can eat at the hotel. There is one last important thing to do today and that is to apply the stickers that we bought at the uh, mountain passes on the underside of the front bonnet. Stelvio, Umbrail, Pass, Fluvilla. So we have Fernpass, the Stelvio, Umbrello Pass, Ofen Pass, Fluela Pass, and Albula. And um, according to our calculations, we should do 10 more passes before the weekend is over, so uh, plenty more to come. That's going to be it for today. Thank you very much for tagging along. We are not even halfway the trip, so there's still plenty more to come. Still uh, a few adventures still await us. So uh, yeah, see you tomorrow. Today was our third day in the Alps. I would also mark the halfway point of the trip. After packing up and putting everything in the car, we waved goodbye to our hotel and started heading towards the Bernina Pass. At this point, we had already done our fair share of mountain road carving and passing through numerous valleys. Yet the feeling of knowing another day of doing exactly that was upon us made us as excited as the days before. Our daily fuel top up ensured we were ready for today's stint. We started heading towards the Bernina Pass, but got a bit sidetracked on the way there after encountering yet another stunning view. That doesn't confirm that you need to road trip the Alps, then uh, I do not know what will. Uh, for us, it's onwards and upwards. Uh, we're still up at the top of the mountain here, so uh, yeah, we'll keep driving for a bit. We're not at the, uh, not entirely at the top of the Bernina yet, but had to stop to enjoy another glacier and um, another mountain, mountain lake full of glacier water, which you can see by the green kind of color. Um, yeah, 
Very beautiful up here and a very nice temperature as well. But yeah, let's continue. Once at the top, we couldn't resist driving back down on the other side of the mountain to experience the Bernina Pass in the right direction, that being the way the mountain pass would be driven during the annual Bernina Gran Turismo. <laughs> We drove the Berlina Pass in both directions and crossed the Italian border afterwards. Being in Italy, we simply couldn't resist stopping at a local restaurant to enjoy the country's culinary arts. Next up, we checked the Julia and Splugen Pass of the list and ventured onwards to our last mountain pass of the day, the San Bernardino. We were again treated to an absolutely stunning stretch of asphalt in front of us and a gorgeous mountain range everywhere else we looked. We probably said this a hundred times during the trip already, but this truly was one of the most unique and gobsmackingly beautiful mountain passes both of us had ever experienced. And to be honest, that's what this trip is all about. It's not about driving fast, it's not about abusing the 911 at every chance we get, it's about taking our time to enjoy both a marvelous car and our deeply rooted love for mountains and road tripping. We are the first ones to admit that this is a dream trip and that we're extremely lucky to be able to do this together. And if it was up to us, the San Bernardino would have gone on forever. Right then and there. Upon our arrival at the top, we enjoyed the views and atmosphere for a while, and according to good habits, we obviously bought the necessary decals as well. This felt well deserved after both we and the good old 911 had just finished another day of hard, but extremely fun work. Now I feel like it's high time that we share some background info on the 911, so let us do just that while we head to the day's dinner. 265,603 kilometers. The engine has never been rebuilt, it's just been well maintained. The uh, gearbox has had a rebuild about five years ago. 
Um, but other than that, the car has been bulletproof. I think we acquired it at about 200,000 kilometers, so... So apparently we acquired it at about 165,000 kilometers. Um, and yeah, we never had any trouble with it. I think maybe even on our way to Austria this weekend was kind of the first time ever we broke down, but that was just because of the, uh, the battery, so not really a, uh, a very bad failure. And I think my dad broke down in the Belgian Ardennes with uh, a broken fuel pump. Also not one of the worst things to happen, but it is pretty annoying. I tried to end the day with some final thoughts, but the wind literally blew that idea away. In any case, this was the end of yet another fantastic day in the Alps. We went to bed early that evening in order to prepare ourselves well for what will be our final full day in the mountains tomorrow. Hello, good morning and welcome to our fourth day of driving around in the Swiss Alps. Um, you join us today halfway up the Tremola Pass, which goes all the way to the top of the uh, Gotar, which you might know from the Gotar Tunnel. Um, this is one of the most authentic mountain passes in all of the Alps combined. Um, you might or might not have seen that um, I'm standing currently on a lot of small little cobblestones which makes it so authentic. This is the old road up the mountain. There's also a new road. And then if you really want to go into Italy very quickly, you can take the Gotthard Tunnel. Um, also, I wanted to maybe make more of a cinematic or give you more of a cinematic look on what it's like to drive throughout the Alps. So I'm not going to vlog the, um, as much today as uh, on the other days. So uh, yeah, I'll try to make it as cinematic as I possibly can. Try to make it as beautiful as I possibly can because it is very beautiful up here. And we're going to do the Susten um, Furka Grimsel Pass today, as well as the Tremola, all the way up to the Gotthard, as I just said. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look at the car here on the Tremola Pass, because it's looking very beautiful, and especially with the these cobblestones, it's, uh, it's pretty special. If you are going to be roadtripping the Swiss Alps, the Tremola San Gotardo has to be on your bucket list. It is the longest road monument in all of Switzerland and is even listed in the inventory of historic Swiss roads. Why? Because the Tremola Strasse was built between 1827 and 1832, nearly 200 years ago. The mountain pass is presented to us today as it was back in 1951, preserving a very important part of Swiss engineering, culture, dry stone wall structures and a truly unique mountain driving experience. Surprisingly, the millions of small cobblestones offer a very smooth ride, even in the 911. Unsurprisingly though, this was yet another one of those special and unique mountain passes Switzerland has to offer. Who would have guessed?
we arrived at the top of the Tremola in full awe of the experience and took a moment to let everything sink in. This was only our first mountain pass of the day and it felt like we had already peaked, even though another three stunning passes were waiting for us further down the road. We always noticed a pretty clear power difference in the 911 once we got to above 2000 meters of altitude due to the thin air, so letting the car cool down is always an added bonus of taking a short break on these mountain tops. Once we decided our break had been adequate, it was high time for us to start making our way to the Sustenpass. As per usual, when we were nearing the foot of the Sustem Pass, we got a fantastic view on the local glaciers. But this time it wasn't the scenery or the road that surprised us, it was a group of men doing a road trip of their own, in tractors. One of the guys was driving a Porsche diesel tractor, so obviously we stopped to say hello and pay our respects to their road trip of 580 kilometers through the Swiss Alps. And these weren't just kilometers through valleys, their route covered the Sustenpass, Oberalp, Lugmania, Gotthard, Furka, and many more. What we thought would be a quick 2 minute stop to switch drivers turned into a 30 minute chat with like minded enthusiasts. Afterwards, it was time for us and the 911 to battle our way up the Sustenpass, and even though the road was great, in all honesty, it was the view on the Susten's icy peaks in the distance that had us mesmerized entirely. Once at the top, we took our compulsory break and, of course, bought another decal. Since we had spent so much time on the Tremola Pass, we didn't stick around for long and soon set our sights on the Furka Pass. The mountain range around the Furka is home to the Rhone Glacier, and I feel like it's necessary to quickly mention how apparent the effect of global warming dawned on us when we stood at the bottom of the mountain pass. In the early 1900s, the glacier came all the way into the valley, while nowadays it has retreated well into the mountains and is barely visible from the road. What once was one of the most prominent glaciers of the Alps is now but a shadow of its former self, and it feels quite sad that Switzerland is losing its glaciers at a fairly rapid pace. The Furka Pass itself is again a treat to experience. One of the most prominent features of the mountain pass, next to the Rhone Glacier, is the now abandoned Belvedere Hotel. Once famous for its glacier views, it is now famous for its unique place and presence on social media. Obviously, we couldn't pass up on Pudding 911 right in front of the hotel, which was by the way built all the way back in 1882. The views from this place were again absolutely spectacular. However, we soon realized our trip was nearing its end. To our pleasant surprise, on the last mountain pass of the weekend, on top of the Oberalp Pass, we were greeted once again by the tractor guys, who were just about to leave as we arrived. It was right then and there on the top of that last mountain pass that we did that weekend that the road trip kind of concluded. As we were waving goodbye to the tractor guys, they were doing an absolutely fantastic road trip of their own. We kind of went back to the hotel and just started reminiscing about the entire trip, started looking through our own photos that we just took one or two days ago as we were st standing on the top of the Furka Pass or the top of the San Bernardino Pass or any any mountain pass that we did during the during the entire weekend and 
coming back home, driving back home, obviously it was pretty difficult to adjust to daily life again as it, as it usually goes with amazing trips like this. We'd come so used to being in the Alps from the get-go to wake up and be in these beautiful mountains and know that another day of driving on some of the most beautiful roads in the world is upon us yet again, that coming home really hit us quite hard. And um, I think doing a trip like this in a car that is very special for us, in a region that's spe very special for both my father and me, was extremely nice. It was something that we'd been dreaming about for a very long time. And I'm really glad that I got to share this experience with both you guys, but also with my father. It was a really special weekend. And I think this is just the first trip of many that we're going to make. We also urge you guys to do something similar in a region that's close to you, something which you would find absolutely amazing um, to experience. You don't need a 911 to do something like this. You can do it with any car. Just make sure that you have some fantastic company to do this with because you will cherish those memories basically forever. And that's exactly what we're going to do as well, because the memories that we made that weekend are extremely important to us and we will cherish them for the rest of our lives. If you've made it this far through the video or through the entire series, then thank you very much for watching. I had a lot of fun putting this entire series together. Uh, it was really cool to do a Christmas special as well. It just The timing was just right with me having the time to put this together and having a bunch of film already made, <laughs> a bunch of videos or shots already made from this trip. Um, we did a similar trip to the Lamar Classic in our 356, or in my dad's 356, I should say. And I made a ton of footage from that trip as well. So I am planning on making something out of that as well. If you want to see a short trailer of that trip, then head to the channel to our videos. There is a two, like two, three minute uh, video trailer about that. Um, but yeah, anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you have any friends or if you know anyone who would love this series, then please share it with them. We have a playlist of the three episodes. Um, and I think it's... I personally think it's a great watch. I sometimes just watch the videos myself because I, the, the memories are just so vivid for me. Um, and I'm sure that other people will enjoy these videos as well. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you very much for tagging along. Thank you very much also for a pretty cool 2022. I just love making these videos. They are pretty cool memories for me. And at least I get to share my passion and my interests with some of you guys on YouTube as well. So. Uh, yeah, have a very great holidays, everyone, and I'll see you in 2023 with a bunch of new videos, a bunch of new ideas, and a bunch of new projects.